No. Did you have any luck finding anything at all? No, nothing. I, I applied for like 128 jobs, and I got two interviews, and that's it. Well, what happened? Uh, one uh, one offered on. me Hello? a job. Hello? Uh, but did you hear something? Hello? I heard something in the background. Is that someone talking? Hello? It, yes, it is. I'm letting you know that somehow we all got connected in no, our conversation. There's nobody at my house. Going, Roy, who is I'm that? I'm going to hang up. Who is that at your house? Roy, Roy who, who do you have over there? I, I don't have anyone. Hello? It's it's like I like I don't even hear it. Do you hear something? Yes, I hear that floozy talking on your phone. Did, did she pick no, up things? No, no. Can you hold? Hello. Ah, like I, every hello. time, Roy. Like, what, you're always ma'am, <laughs> ma'am, will you listen? I, I Somehow think... your calls got connected to my phone. I don't know who, who either of you are. Listen, you little I'm floozy. Going to hang up. You little floozy. That's not your phone. That's Roy's phone. You need to get out of his house. I swear, Carol, no, no, there's, no. There's, there's nobody no, here. No, no. I, I would never cheat on there you. Is... You're... Carol, whatever your name is. Hey, how, how, do you, how does not, she know my name? I am name? not. I don't know either oh, one of you. Roy, how Can do you, you hear how, me? How does she know my name? Can She's you saying, hear me, ma'am? I, I because think I, he just said your name. He just said your name. I want to know how she knows my name. You, this is, oh, ma'am, ma'am. Carol, Carol, your voice is starting to echo. Would it's you, really weird. Would you listen a minute, please? Oh wait, I think I hear her too. Carol, are you still there? Would I you? Think... Would you all listen a minute, please? Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Carol, is that you? Somehow. Carol. No, it's not. Carol. No, it's not. Why Carol. do you sound like? Well, I'm not Carol. I'm trying to tell you that somehow your phone call to her got tied in with my phone. You know what, I'm Roy? I'm a stranger to you. We're, th we're through. We're, we're through. I'm, well, I'm, I'm going to hang you. up. Like, you got that, like, just have no, no. fun with your little floozy Carol. over there. Carol. Is that, is that Can Rose? you hear me? Is that Rosemary? That sounds Can like Rosemary. Me? Who am I talking to? Well, what are you doing on our line, Rosemary? I'm your neighbor. I don't know. I have no idea. You shouldn't be on somehow my phone. Somehow your what? call, what? somehow your call got hooked into my what? phone. Too. What are you doing over at Rose? What are you doing over at Roy's house? Like you, you have no I'm business. Not. You have no business being at Roy's house. I'm not. I'm not. Then, then how I'm are in you? my own home. But are, I'm in my own home. Roy, like I, I told you, one more Carol? time and we're through. Carol, I, Carol. I swear, Rosemary meant Hello? nothing to me, Carol. It was just a one-time no. thing. Hello. It'll never happen again, I'm, I promise. Me and Rosemary, we got caught up in the heat of the moment, and you know what one. You, what is this crap? One thing led to another, and next thing you know, lie, we're, lie, we're just lie. going going lie, at lie. it. Yeah, I've heard all of this before, Roy. Like, I, I'm just I'm finished. It's over. I'm I'm gonna hang up on you. No, please don't do that because you're you're accusing him wrongly. Come on, Carol, to, please just give me one more you're chance. You're accusing him wrongly. Rosemary wasn't even a good a good lay. Why are you doing this? Whatever your name is. Is that you asking me what why I'm doing this, or is that Rosemary? It's hard to tell you two apart. That was Rosemary. Like you should know, she's right there at your house. No, I am in my she, own home, and somehow all our phones got connected. She's just now leaving. She's getting dressed. Jeez. Who are you kidding? He's uh, lying, Carol. R Rosemary, <laughs> look, the gig is up. She she knows about us. We just need to come uh -huh. clean. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is it, you are a disgusting yeah. man, Roy. You're disgusting. I can't believe... I'm beginning to agree with you, Carol. <laughs> I'm going to hang up now. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, well, just, you don't even have to leave his house. Just... This one goes out to a very special lady out there. A lady named Rosemary. I've been thinking about you, Rosemary. All the things I want to do. I've been thinking about you, Rosemary. All the things I'm going to do. So let's get caught up in the heat of the moment. Let one thing lead to another Next thing you know oh, We're just going, going at it Rosemary 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 For whatever you 
what I do, baby girl. Don't tell Carol. Thank you, Aaron, for that intro song. Hey, everyone, you're listening to the Snowplow Show. Today is May 21st, 2020, and this one's brought to you by I Regret Jumping, Omni, Ernie M, FOD87, and 4OCRV Hobos. And I'm making that last person a sponsor again, even though I think he may have been a sponsor a couple episodes ago, because I fucked up his name. I said TV Hobos, not RV Hobos. And this guy just starts, he emails me, starts screaming at me, calls me a motherfucker. No, I'm sorry. I'm kidding about that. He just wanted to alert me that I screwed up. And I think it was just a typo. The T key is right next to the R key. But he says the meaning of his name is he has a family of four. They love listening to my pranks. We live in Orange County, California, and we travel in an RV on vacation. And calling ourselves hobos is hilarious. My kids think it's funny every time you use that to irritate people. So I've got it right this time for OC RV hobos. I get it now. I'm very sorry. It won't happen again. I promise. This past Saturday, Dwight did a tribute episode to Carlito on his show. He does a show every Saturday night called Mop Riding with Dwight or the Dwight Show. I don't even know. It's a show. It's got Dwight in it. I'm always unclear what the name is. I was on there with him, though. Quite a few other people were on there with him. One of Carlito's prank call victims was on there with us. And I I don't know which guy it was. I forget at this point. But the guy had super nice things to say about Carlito. And he actually donated to the GoFundMe that I set up for Carlito to help his family with Carlito-related expenses. You know, the funeral and stuff. Which, by the way, has reached over $10,000 now. Holy shit. We're probably going to shut that off soon. Oh, yeah. Have I mentioned lately that uh, Carlito is no longer with us? This happened about two weeks ago. Carlito is gone. It sucks. But we had a nice little tribute show on Saturday, and I'll have a link to that in the show notes if you want to listen to it. We didn't do any new pranks that night. We pretty much just played old Carlito pranks and talked about Carlito and had Madhouse people call in. Milkman was there, everyone. We haven't heard from Milkman in forever, and he was there for pretty much the entire show. That was kind of awesome. Let's see, what else? I did a hobo sewed a couple days ago. That was on Tuesday. I did some number changes, some reference checks, some GPS tracker calls. It was kind of fun. You should go listen to that if you're a supporter of the show. And oh yeah, let's mention the new people who've signed up recently. Robert K, Davey T, Gloria, Dingo, Ghost, Lawrence D, Frigid Yeti, Dylan C, Sentry Productions, and Brian J. Thanks all of you for signing up on the Patreon. If you want to be a supporter of the show, please go to patreon.com slash losers. You'll get a hobo sode every week, which has been kind of nice these past few weeks since I've sucked so bad at doing snowplow shows and getting those put out. Sorry about that, everyone. I'm going to try to do better with all this. I don't think I really have any more announcements, really. So let's do some calls. Hello? Hi, Betty. No, this is Denise next door. Oh, stupid me. Yeah, that's who I wanted to call. I'm so stupid. <laughs> stupid. Oh, hey, this is Bob from the Homeowners Association. Uh-huh. Uh, did they tell you that we're going to be putting a 30-foot antenna on your roof? No. No. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be there. There's going to be some trucks there tomorrow and a crane. And no, 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 no. You must have the wrong number. Oh, no. You live at the 20... 20- I, I meant to call you. I wasn't trying to call. What's her face? No, you will, you will not be putting anything on our roof. Oh, no. We're just going to put an antenna. It's just going to be a large mast. No, and... no. You won't be putting anything on our roof. Oh, yes, we will. It's for communications between uh, the, the no, you various won't. board members. No, you won't. But I'm trying to explain it to you. It's going to be like a, a very a very large. You are not putting anything on the roof of this house. Denise, why are you being like this? Why not? I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to let you... Like, it's already scheduled. Who, you, who are you? This is Bob. Bob who? Dabalina. See, that means nothing to me. Then why'd you ask? <laughs> Goodbye. I'm on the board, ma'am. So, what I'm doing today is I'm calling numbers off of a list that was sent to me by a guy named Hardy. He says, a friend of mine found a really shitty website for an HOA that lists all the residents' names and phone numbers and houses. These would probably be good for a show since they live in an HOA with an extremely pretentious name and they're all old. And this is like a really small one-street thing, 
but there's a lot of people that live on this one street. It's like a weird curved street. So I thought I'd call up everybody on this street, and do some wacky HOA ideas. And that was an idea from Parkman's. That was more like a, a city idea that he came up with when I was doing the, uh, you know, piles of gravel on people's yards. And he's got a couple others in here. I just really like the antenna idea. So I'm going to do that a couple more times. And I probably need to hurry because I get the feeling this is like a tight knit community and they all know each other. They're all going to be contacting each other and telling them about Bob Dabalina. There is a Bob on their board, but it's not Bob Dabalina. Hello, hello. Hello, Richard. Hi, Fred. Hey there. Oh, no, this isn't Fred. This is actually Bob. I'm, I'm using Fred's phone. Oh, yes. Uh, I was in his house, and I just kind of walked out with his cordless phone by accident, but now I'm just making calls on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, um, did they tell you about the antenna on your house? No. Oh, they're going to be putting like a, a 50-foot mast antenna thing on top of your house that's just for uh, communication between board members. 50 foot? Yeah, it's going to be like one of those really, really large ones. It's gonna ha We're going to have cables come down at an angle and kind of anchor it like way back by your fence. And then like... My roof? Um, yeah, just because your, your house is just um, perfectly located for where we need the signal to travel. You know, line of sight and all that stuff. You gotta be kidding! No, nope. well, where's where's the uh, wires come down from? Uh, the well, they're gonna come down from the top of the antenna. That's just in case it gets too windy, and you know we ha we have to have those cables to hold the the antenna in place. the The ones on the sides, you know, we have to have four anchor things. The ones on the sides are actually gonna attach to your neighbor's roofs. Oh my goodness! Okay, yep. but we're gonna be there tomorrow with some trucks and a crane. And uh, just to, you know, they, they're going to install the antenna. Uh, so I'm the lucky one, huh? Yep, yep, you are. Like, your house is going to look the most futuristic. Yeah, all right, okay. But, um, yeah, you're probably not going to want to hang out in your yard tomorrow. There's going to be a crane out there lowering a giant antenna onto the top of your house, right in the middle, right in the middle of the roof. I don't have any choice, do I? No. <laughs> so is this this is going to do what? Help us in a, on a, on, a, on the internet? Yeah. Can well, we yeah. Um, we we just you know we use the homeowner funds to purchase some uh, some you know like CB radio type things, but they're they're on our own special encrypted channel, so we can talk to each other. Mm, all right. And uh, yeah, this will just allow us to. We're all going to have, like, you know, CB microphones in our houses that we can pick up and say hi to each other. Not you, just the board members. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and th this is all because of uh, Greg's wife. Like, she doesn't like to use cell phones. So we're just going to use radios instead to appease her. <laughs> well, put the 50 foot thing on her house then <laughs> well no hers isn't like centrally located enough all right for where we need to need to reach okay i'll what stay do? away from tomorrow okay yeah just stay in the house and uh uh you just just ignore that big crane setting up out in the front yard you know they it's gonna it's like a really large crane it's gonna drive up under your front lawn and put those big stomper things down to secure itself it goes a cup. It goes like a foot down into the gr into the grass. There's going to be some indentations, just so you know. Oh goody! All right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Are you okay? You, you sound like a little defeated. Oh no! I I mean, uh, no. I'm trying to adjust to it. Oh yeah. I mean, the fifty foot deal of my house doesn't sound. Or our house, how the hell you want to say it. It doesn't sound the most attractive thing. And yeah, it'll look cool, though. You'll see. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, do you have satellite TV? No. Okay, well, that's good, because you, you won't be able to have satellite TV. The the, the radio, it'll be, there'll just be too much interference. Hmm. And you're not, okay. you're not, like, allergic to RF energy, are you? How the hell do I know that? I don't know. <laughs> I guess you'll find out. Well, I don't, didn't even know that was a problem. 
Yeah, well, you know, some people say they're allergic. They're probably just looking for attention, though. I have no idea. Uh, do you, do you know, like, um, you know, it, it's going to be like really powerful magnetic, electromagnetic radiation, and it's probably going to make ghosts visible um, in and around your property. Make what visible? Ghosts. <laughs> Why is that funny? I mean, you're probably you're not going to think it's funny when it's the middle of the night and you see a just a, something walking through your hallway. I <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> okay, that last part was a joke. It's not going to make ghosts visible. <laughs> I would hope not. I was just trying to lighten the mood. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me talk to Betty now. Ah, uh, sure. Hey, Betty. <laughs> Hello, it's Betty here. Hey, Betty. Uh, so Richard was telling me, he gave me his permission, and he said he'd be okay with you, too. We're going to be putting a 50-foot antenna on your roof uh, tomorrow morning. You're putting a 50-foot antenna? Yep, on the roof. So, uh, like, you don't use a sewing machine, do you? Yeah, yeah I do. Oh, crud. Because here's the thing. Like, all that extra energy up there, that's going to make the sewing machine run, like, at least twice the speed that it normally would. Well, I handle that. Okay. Well, you're yeah, you're just going to have to watch your fingers, you know? Like, we don't want you to get hurt. Are you serious? Yes. Like, pretty much uh, any anything in your house that has a motor in it. It's going to run really fast now. Actually, it's going to, like, the motors are going to run whether or not you have them turned on. So, like, <laughs> even when the sewing machine's off, you're just going to kind of hear it in there just <laughs> churning away. Tomorrow you're going to do this. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but they won't have it activated. They, they still, they, they've got to have the contractors come in. They're going to be installing a... Uh, a communication shed in your backyard. Now, oh, come on now. What are you talking about now? <laughs> are you pulling our leg? Well, no, the, the antenna's got to have something to plug into. So how big is that going to be? Oh, it's just a little shed. Just, you know, just a little one. It's going to have an air conditioner in it so the equipment inside doesn't overheat. <laughs> are you just a joke? Oh, no, I wouldn't kid about this, but... Like, do you have ceiling fans and stuff? Because those are going to spin indefinitely. But it won't cost you any money. Like, you're actually going to save money this way. Because anything with the motor in it's going to go a little bit, go, you know, just work a little bit better. Yeah, but are we going to have noise all the time then from that? From what? Oh, from the fans? Yeah. No, because technically the motors aren't running. Oh, all right. They're just going to be spinning around constantly. Whether you want them to or not. To what do we owe this to? Uh, it was just decided your your house is the best place to put a fifty foot antenna on top of because it's centrally located, and you know all the board members they want to talk to each other on on radios. <laughs> They're all going to have base station radios in their houses. All right, are we the only ones getting this antenna? Yes, yes, but you don't get a radio because you're not a board member. Oh, come on. But. Antenna, we get a radio. Yeah, but you get more efficient ceiling fans and more efficient sewing machines and stuff like that. Who decided all this? Uh, I did, personally. You're welcome. I don't believe all this. Okay. Well, you'll see tomorrow when the giant crane arrives. <laughs> all right. I'll wait till tomorrow then and see if your saying is true or not. Okay. You'll see. And then uh, when it does get installed, I'm going to need you to call me back and offer me an apology for doubting me. Oh. <laughs> I will. Okay, thank you so much. Do that. I hope you both have the best day ever. Well, you have a good day, too, and be safe. Oh, we, I will. All right. I'm wearing my mask. Yes, thank uh, you. All right, I love you, Betty. 
Love you too. Okay, I don't love your husband, but I love you. <laughs> well, thank you. Sure. Your husband's kind of a motherfucker. Yeah. Yep. All right. See ya. All right. All right. Bye. I'm gonna guess they did not believe that at all. What a waste of time that was. So I've got these other ideas here from Sam. I think he emailed these to me. I can't really remember. I just know I pasted them into my ideas page because he has a bunch of homeowners ideas involving COVID-19 and stuff. I'm definitely going to do the antenna thing again, though. That needs to be done. Hello. Hey there, Barbara. It's, it's Hello. Hey, it's Bob from the HOA. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi. How are you? Good. That's good. I am doing good as well. Hey, um, we've gotten some complaints that, you know, like when you go out of the house, you're wearing a face mask to protect against the COVID. Okay. And people are saying that yours is not a very flattering face mask and you should buy a nicer one. What are you talking about? You know, just <laughs> like may, maybe have a better design on it or something more fashionable. You know, I'm not sure which Bob you are. Which Bob are you? Uh, Bob Dabalina. I know I'm calling from Fred's number. I I, yes. I I have his cordless phone. You know, we don't... I, I have no idea what you're talking about. We have four face masks, and we generally, when we take the dog out, we don't wear them. One has daisies on it. I don't know what you're talking about. Are yeah. you sure you have the right barb? Oh no, I'm I'm positive. You live at twenty two eighty nine. Yeah. It's just um people have been saying that you're making the neighborhood look like a bunch of hobos by not wearing nice face masks. And you're just wearing What describe this face mask. Well, you have the one with the daisies, right? I I I hope you're joking. I, I don't know. What's going it, on here? It's just that your your face masks are not up to the community standards. Can I speak like, with Fred, please? Uh, well, I'd have to run back to his house. I have his cordless phone, and he doesn't know. Like I'm 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 back at my house. And where do you live? Uh, just like three houses down from him. I hope I hope there's not like a bunch of static. Since I'm far away from his no, home. no, this is not this is. Look. What what's your address? That's weird that you're even asking that. Look, have you thought of bedazzling your face mask? You know, putting like some sequins on it? You know those little glue on diamond things? Just so it looks nicer? No. Well, do you think you could think about that? No. Cuz we're getting complaints. Who's complaining? Everybody. Everybody's complaining. I've, I've gotten like several emails. So not everybody. Several people. But I have to take hmm. the complaint seriously. And if you're wearing, you know, just like a, a not very nice looking face mask. And what, what is the not nice looking? Well, the one that you wear is not nice looking. Can you just go hmm. buy some nicer ones instead of arguing about it? No. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, well, that's the problem, okay? You're making us all look like hobos because you can't be bothered. When to... am I wearing this face mask? Just, you know, when you go out, I guess. I don't know. Maybe people have seen you out of the store or something. But, you know, you're you're representing the whole neighborhood when you're out, out in public with your face mask. And, and can you tell me, uh, who's your wife? No, I refuse. Well, I mean, why are you asking me weird questions like that? Because I don't know who you are. And I, you're calling me on on Fred's phone. Yeah, I told you. And I'm, that makes no... I'm Bob. Bob who? Dabalina. And I don't know the Dabalina. Okay, well, no. I, I, we changed our name. It used to be... Oh. Durr. You didn't know we changed our name? We we changed it in the directory. No. Just look in the directory. We're the Dabalinas now. Bob and Dabalina. Okay. 
I am absolutely astounded because I don't wear a face mask when I'm walking the dog, so no one in the neighborhood would see me. I don't, when I go out in my car, I'm in my car. I'm not making it look bad. Yeah, and but, you know, if the neighbors see you driving around with a, a hobo-looking face mask. What is a hobo-looking face mask? You know, like, if you're going to wear ugly face masks, the next thing you know, everyone's going to think we're just a bunch, we're just a hobo neighborhood. We're just a bunch of hobos living here. Is you know, this your biggest problem today? Yes, it is. It's the biggest complaint today. So I'm just calling up to to figure this out and help you get a nicer face mask. Where, where'd you buy your face masks from? I made them. Oh, there's the problem. Oh, no. This is a, I hope this is a joke. I believe it's a joke. Can you make nicer ones? Hmm. Okay. Describe your. Why don't you send me a picture of. Why are you on Fred's phone to start with? I went over to his house to, to discuss uh, a matter with him because we're, we're installing a uh, 50 foot antenna on, on top of his house. And I used his phone for a minute and then I put it in my pocket and I just kind of left with it. Hmm. Hmm. So I'm just I'm just using it, you know, like he hasn't called and asked for it yet, but he probably can't because he didn't have a phone. Hmm. You know. Well, I'm gonna walk down and uh, talk uh -oh. to a couple people. Like who? Who's the first person you'll talk to? Why? I'm just curious. You're the one that's telling me. You brought it up. No, I'm, um, I can tell that you did call from Fred's phone because I have Fred's, it, it, Fred is in my, uh, call list. Yeah, I'm not disputing that. I'm calling from Fred's phone, like, so sue me. I, 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 I kept his phone when I left his house. I'll, I'll give it back to him. It's not like I'm going to keep it forever. I just want to make a few calls. Barbara? 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 Hey, what happened? Oh, shoot. Are you on your cordless phone? It's It's cutting out. Barbara. Barbara, where are you going? Are you wearing a face mask? I hope you're wearing a face mask. Uh-oh, it's, it's sounding even worse. I'm losing you, Barbara. On Fred's phone. Who is it? Just was here a minute ago. She got a call about a, a crane on the roof. You're having. I'm wearing a. Oh. Mask. It'll look bad. <laughs> now, who did your call from? From here? Bob. But it's Fred's phone. Yes. Headline 763. I can't tell right now. Barbara, hold your phone up so it gets, gets a better signal. It's not Bob Cabello's no, voice. No, no. And the person that called there. Wait for here. Does he have his phone? The house phone? Uh huh. Yeah. He says it's the house phone. Yeah. yeah. They got all our house phone numbers and are calling each other. Oh, no. Hmm. 
Barbara. She was, what? Oh, hey, you're still there. Like you were ignoring me for so for so long. Okay, so now I know you're full of crap. What? Don't use the c word on me. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna use any word because I just talked to Fred. Ah. And you have somehow taken his number. Yeah. I mean, it's just a joke. You know, I was just joking. Who's joking? Me, Bob. You're not Bob. I am too, Bob. Oh, no, you know, you're not Bob. You're not Bob. <laughs> okay. Did you wear you're your, done. Did you wear your face mask to visit that neighbor? I'm done with you. Did you wear Goodbye. your Did you wear your face mask? It doesn't sound like you're wearing a face mask. This lady is the reason the death rate keeps going up. So I think maybe I should change my number to Bob's so we can avoid all this Fred confusion. And I think she just talked to the lady that I talked to before, the one that thought it was really funny, and her husband. I don't know who they were. They may have been board members or something. But let's call up Peter and Shirley. Hello? Hi, Shirley? Yes? Hey there, it's Bob from the Homeowners Association. Bob who? The only Bob there is on the board. Oh, Bob. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a little, I was just a little um, anxious because I just got the email from Fred. Oh, I, I got that too. E there's like, a, somebody's there's using... a phone scam going along. Oh, yeah. Someone's using his number or something, aren't they? Yeah. That's weird. I don't know. So what... I just... I just wanted to check, and it, and it came to my cell phone as as Best Buy, so that was even weirder. As Sorry, Best Buy? I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> anyway, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Hey, um, like you know, we've had our our people out like looking in windows and stuff, and we noticed that you and your husband aren't really social distancing inside the house. Okay. So you just you know uh, when what, you're, when, what do you mean? Well, just when you're walking around the house or when you're watching TV, you guys need to keep a six-foot distance from each With other. With my family? Yeah, yeah. Like, they, they, they've they been, I've gotten some reports saying that, like, you know, you guys watch television, you'll sit too close together, or when you eat dinner, you're within six feet of each other. This got, is a joke, right? Oh, no, I wouldn't kid about this. You gotta be careful. So... Are are you social distancing from your wife? Oh yeah, absolutely. I have been. For are you sleeping over... in the same bed? Oh no, no. We uh, I'm in the guest room now. But oh man, we know well, we know you two been sleeping in the same bed and eating too close together and just just generally just being too close together, just walking around the house and passing each other. Tell, tell me, tell me, tell me who is complaining about this. Oh no! It's just the the it's just um you know the the HOA. We we've got enforcers. We go around peeking in windows, and we saw that you guys were being kind of close. So nobody. I don't believe this. So nobody's complaining. I don't believe this for a minute, Bob. I don't believe this for a minute, Bob. This is just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's not ridiculous. It's we're in the middle of a pandemic. You have to social distance, even in your own home. Well, you have a wonderful day, Bob. And listen, you, you need I'm to gonna wear... Call, I'm going to call... I... Who, who are you gonna... Do I have to wear a face mask at, at home? Yeah, of course. If Bob's around. I mean, if... Um, what's his face? Peter's around. Wow. Yeah. Well, I will take this under advisement. Otherwise, I guess I'm just risking my life. Okay, yeah. And you're risking a fine I, I... from the HOA. What? We'll find you if you if you don't like separate and keep your distance. This is this is really a scam now. How's it a scam? I'm not gonna. I'm not asking for money now. I'm just saying, you know. This you is to... this this is now a scam. You're a scam. This is a big joke. Your face is a scam. 
Really, Bob? Well, I don't, what are you even talking about? It's a scam. It's me. It's Bob. You're saying my... Yeah, Bob. Yeah, what? What's your wife's name? Why? I don't believe I don't believe this phone conversation. So if I know that my wife's name you is know, you're you're gonna suddenly believe me? Do you know who lives right next door to me? Yes. Who lives right Look, next door I to me? I passed I passed the what's my wife's name test. You don't have to give me another test. I already passed. Who lives right next door to me? No, I already answered your first question. No, you, I want to know who lives right next door to me. Ma'am, I'm not the one on trial here. You're, you're the one that's walking around yes. in your house. Yes, you are on mask. trial here. No, I'm you not. You are on trial here. Your face is on trial. Who lives right, who lives right next to me? Uh, it's that one bitch. What? It's that one bitch. Me and her don't get along. That's good. Yeah. What's her name? I already gave you my wife's name. Okay, where where did we go for the um okay. the committee that we were on? Look, what shut committee up. was it we were no, on together? No, you just shut up. Look, listen. What what committee you're were we one, on together? You're the rule breaker. I'm not the rule breaker. I don't know why I'm getting the I, third degree. I want to know who you are. I already told because you because I is, cannot believe. You can't believe what? Who is it? You can't believe what? Who that, is it? It's Bob. Bob. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go right next door and verify your story. Oh, good. I hope you do. And, um, okay. I hope, Thank you. I hope they tell you what a huge idiot you are. I am going to have to abandon this list, even though I've only called four or five people now. Which kind of sucks, because it's a pretty big list. But this lady's on top of things. She's already gotten the email. They all know what's going on. So I'm going to skip Bob. I don't think I'm going to call it Bob. I'm going to go down to the next person on the list. That was another idea of Sam's, by the way. Oh, wait, maybe it wasn't. I wasn't supposed to say I was looking in the windows. Just that the neighbors are complaining because they're walking around too close to each other. Sorry for messing up your idea, Sam. Hello? Mike! Yeah? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell. I was yelling at my wife right before you picked up. <laughs> hey, uh, this, is, this is Bob. Okay. No. What's up? What What's she saying? What's that lady saying in the background? Tell her to shut up. Because I heard her say no. Yeah. <laughs> if it's for golf today, I can't make it. Oh, no. It's not for golf. Um, did they tell you we're going to be installing an antenna on your roof? No, you're not going to be doing that over here. Oh, yes, we are. It's going to be like a 50-foot a antenna. Yeah, no thanks. What do you mean, no thanks? See, I think everyone's been warned. As soon as I said I was Bob, I could hear the wife in the background being like, no. Maybe I shouldn't call in alphabetical order, because that's probably what they're doing. I mean, they've emailed everyone. Hello. Hello, Dick. Yes. It, it's Bob from the HOA. How you doing? Did, well, I'm pretty good. Did, did you get that email we sent out? Um, <laughs> I'm, you're sure Bob from HOA? Yeah. You mean our homeowners association? Yes. Yeah. I used a fancy acronym. It, it's a way to. Yeah, you did. It's a way to save time. Instead of saying homeowners association, <laughs> I just say HOA. <laughs> Because, you know, I'm young yeah, and hip. Well, I, I recognize it, but I don't recognize your voice. What's your last name? Uh, oh, yes. Durr. Anyway, we're going to be installing <laughs> a 50-foot um, a antenna on top of your house. It's for uh, radio communications. They're gonna, there's going to be some contractors arrive tomorrow in a truck with a crane. They're going to be... Uh, what are they going to put it on top of my house for? Uh, just your house is kind of centrally located, and you know we just we need it to reach really far so we can contact people in the other homeowners associations across the city. Across the whole city. Yep, yep. We're all Holy we're cow. we're starting up a HOA network. 
We're all gonna have What's we're all gonna have radios. We're gonna have like the most modern radios you can buy. In, in terms of like for you know, just communication to, for storms and whatever. Yeah, yeah, or just to chat, you know, just to hang out and chat. It's just for board members, so like you can't get on it. Oh, okay. But yeah, we're gonna put the antenna What's on. What's it do to the value of my home? Uh, probably make it go up because you're gonna have like a high tech antenna on your roof. What's it do for me? Uh, it improves the value of your home because you have a high tech antenna. You also look like the the fanciest house, you know, on the street because you'll have the antenna up there. Nobody else has an antenna. But you know, I'd like to see what it looks like. It's gonna go. It's gonna go fifty feet above your roof. So we're gonna have some string down some cables to just kind of hold it in place in case of uh, storms and stuff. We don't want it to fall over. So we'll have some anchor cables, like one in your front yard, one in the back. I'm not wanting to do that. Yeah. Well, we've already decided. Cables in the yard. Well, just one single cable, you know, from, from, you well, know, one just... in the back, one in the front, you got to, I need to, I need to talk about this, not over the phone just, either. Just for safety, you know, just for safety. You got, you can't be too well, careful. I'm not going to, I don't, I don't really want to do that. Uh, it's too late. We are, I already signed you up. And the trucks are going to be my damn house. Their trucks are going to be. You, you don't have any. You don't have any authority to put a antenna on my house. But the trucks are already scheduled to be there tomorrow. Well, I, why didn't you contact I, me? Well, I I thought I sent you an email. Maybe I. Hell no. I probably. I check my emails every day. I haven't seen one. Did you get the email today? Well, I just now got on the on my email today. I went for a walk this morning. Oh, go check your email machine. Did you wear a face mask? I'm you... not going to allow that. I'm not going to allow this thing to happen. Can you just look at your email real quick, and we'll just see what's in there. See what it says. Maybe it's in your spam folder. I got Kunze Hayward Best Buy Steiner Steiner. Property management. Crab apple spray. That's not it. What about, Fredings. Oh. Is, is there something like in the inbox <laughs> like that just came in about Fred's phone? I'm looking at my... I had about 30 emails here. Hmm. You need to check your emails more often. Stay on top of that. I get them 30 a day. Yeah, what else are you doing? We're on we're on lockdown. Just spin your, spin your days cleaning out your email. I do it every day. I'm not unhappy about it. So. Did you see the email from today? Like the one that just came in? I'm checking my junk. Whoa, TMI. That's what that's where it should be. You're on Gmail, right? No, oh. I'm not. Okay, jeez. Oh, you're on MSN.com. That's correct. <laughs> That's hilarious. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Just... Probably only been on MSN.com for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> Time to upgrade. Well, I don't. Get, get yourself some of that Gmail. Anyway, this this antenna, you know, there's going to be a lot of energy going through it. Uh, well, why the hell do I care about that? Well, because uh, it's going to make, like, all of the motors in your house spin a little bit faster than they normally would. Like in your ceiling fans and blenders. You know, it's just going to make everything, like, your ceiling fans are going to spin all the time, just really, really slow. They're just going to slowly spin around, really lazily, even when they're turned off, all night, all day. 
but it won't use up any electricity. How do you know that? Uh, because the electricity is coming from the antenna. It's it's like an electromagnetic thing. I don't understand. I'm no scientist. I'm not either. I, I'm just... And this, this other thing they wrote in here... I, I don't... This is, I, 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 I'm not going to allow this truck to put an antenna on my house. Oh, no. It's a big truck. You won't be able to stop it. Bullshit. Oh, I'll you'll stop it. No, it, it's like there's several trucks. There's going to be a whole team of contractors. There's going to be a crane, like the, the just one of those huge, huge cranes. Why? God damn it. What? I'm pissed. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to call the damn police. What? No. You can't call. Well, why didn't I ever get notice of this thing and have it explained to me ahead of time? You call me at the last freaking minute, tell me I'm going to put a 50-foot antenna on my house. Yeah, but, you know, like... uh, Yeah, but what, what? It's very, very boorish of you to act like that. Well, at least we're not dumping gravel on your lawn like we did on, on Greg's lawn. What are you talking about? Have you been down to Greg's house? Like we we dumped a, a huge pile of gravel, almost as tall as his house, in the backyard, just because we needed a place to store it. Well, did you get talk to him ahead of time? Uh, yeah, I called him up and let him know we'd be there in the morning. He wasn't happy, so at least at least you don't have gravel on your lawn. You've got a cool antenna. And no, I don't. There's also going to be you're you're something else. I'm I'm hanging up. No, no, I got to I got to tell you about the shed. So if you feel bad about Dick being so pissed off, don't worry because right now he's on the phone to somebody in the neighborhood and they're going to immediately tell him, "Yeah, that was just a prank call. We're all getting them today." Really, I feel like I should just stop on these, but Dick had never heard about it, so maybe the next guy won't either. Hello. Hello, Jan. Hey, it's uh, Bob from the Homeowners Association. Oh, yeah? Hi. Um, did you get, like, we, we mailed every resident in the neighborhood a hazmat suit for, uh, you should have gotten two of them, one for you and one for Fred? Mm-hmm. Did you get those sure yet? I did. Okay. Got four of them. Full hazmat suits, like the big yellow ones? Do we need them? Well, you just need to wear them anytime you leave the house from now on. I like to wear mine in the house. Well, you can wear it in the house. It's just the it's important. It's a bed. I wear it to bed, too. I want to be safe. Yeah. The important thing is you wear it outside the house, though, because we don't care about your health. We just care about everyone else's. You don't care about anybody else's? No, we care about everyone else's health. We don't care about your health, necessarily. You don't care about me? No, we just don't want you infecting other people. Well, then we need more of them. Okay. Can you send some more? Yeah, definitely. It sounds like you got the email. I haven't checked. Hmm. You better check that. Uh, How many more can I have? Uh, Like a billion. I don't know. Okay. Send a billion. All right. I love you. Go screw yourself. No, tell me you love me back. Did you guys hear that? She told me to go screw myself. Hopefully that was loud enough. And she said she didn't get the email, but she seemed ready for me. That's going to be great if they're all ready for me and they all just have some smart-assy thing to say. That's better than them believing me. I mean, not really, but it's kind of amusing. Hello. Hey, Bob. Hi. Hey, it's the other Bob. I'm with the Homeowners Association. Yeah, Bob. Hey, this is awkward. You're making this awkward. Why are you being so quiet? Uh, Because I don't know who you are. I already told you. That's the first thing I said. I'm Bob from the Homeowners Association. Get a life. What? Yeah, I'm going to have to abandon this whole list. I appreciate the list, Hardy. It was fun while I lasted. They were just really fast at alerting everybody. Let me try just, I don't know, a couple more. Hello. Hello, Greg? Yes. Hey, it's Bob from the Homeowners Association. Yeah. Uh, Did you get the hazmat suits that we mailed to you? 
Yeah, this is funny. You quit calling all the people in this neighborhood. I'm the president of the association. Yeah, but, you know, like, we didn't tell you about the hazmat suits. Okay. Okay. You, you know what? What? Leave the neighborhood alone. But or I I'm, will have the police trace this number. Sir, I'm just making silly okay. phone calls. It's just, it's all in good fun. It's not, because these are all seniors that live in this neighborhood, and you're scaring the goddamn piss out of them. No, I'm now, not. you may think it's funny. Yes, you are. Now, you may think it's funny, and I'm the president. And I don't think it's funny. Leave them the fuck alone. Hey, don't yell at you me, sir. Me? And I don't care you, that you're, you you're the president. What Listen, I am saying to you, I am the secretary. Leave them the fuck alone. I'm, you're not nothing. I am okay? too. I'm the secretary. You can't talk to me like you're that. I'm on the of your own ass. I'm on the now board. Leave them alone. That's it. I'm calling the police and having them trace your goddamn number. You better and not leave them the fuck alone. I don't. I am. I don't give you okay? permission. Well, I don't give a rat's ass what you give. Leave the people in this neighborhood alone. That my next call is to the police department. No, don't do now, it. Come go on. Go find something else to do. Go go find something else to go fuck around with. Leave these people alone. I was just trying you to understand me. I was just trying to spread you, awareness. I give one more. You call one more person in this neighborhood, you harass them, you are going to jail. I was just and trying to spread you can awareness. Maybe get the virus yourself. Leave wow. them alone, you asshole. You shouldn't wish that on people. That's that's kind of mean. Okay. You know what? You're a dick. Can you apologize? Leave them alone. Can you please apologize I'm for not, saying that you wish here, I go to jail and get here. COVID? No, listen to me. Go fuck yourself. Oh, leave okay. them alone. Okay. Can, okay? I, can I talk to Carol, please? Get Leave them alone. Okay. I won't call it. Get an, the fuck out of here. I won't call Quit another. calling people. Hey. I won't call another okay. person, but listen, let's let's prank Carol. It'll be funny. Tell Carol. No, it's not. None of it's funny. Go find something else to do with your goddamn time and leave these fucking people alone. I you know, understand but, but me? Listen. I got better things to do with my day. Now leave them the fuck alone. But come That's on, it. it'll, it'll be a great joke Asshole. on Carol and like, okay. I guess I'm done with this list. He asked me not to call anyone anymore, so I won't call anyone anymore. Thank you, Hardy, for sending that list in. And thank you, Sam and Parkman, for the ideas. Those were kind of fun. I think I'm going to do some more of those. I do have a couple more HOA lists. So maybe I can try these ideas out again before the pandemic's over. I do have one other small thing of numbers here to call. Uh, Apollo is forcing me... Like, he mailed me some business cards from the 636 area code, which is in Missouri. Because he thinks that since I'm doing episode 636... I should be calling phone numbers in the 636 area code. Somebody just mentioned that recently in a voicemail. Like, yeah, Brad, why don't you just call the area code that the show number is? So I can call at least a few of these. There's, there's, I don't know, like 10 business cards here. I don't really know what to do with them, though. Like, here's one for a kid's club. Uh, I guess it's a haircut place. Yeah, it's a salon. It's a haircut place that has specials for kids. Only $8 to cut your kid's hair. 10 and under. That's bullshit. Why do I have to pay so much for a haircut? Kid probably has more hair than me. And they get a free gift. Barbershop. Hey, I was calling to um, just see if you guys are open and everything. I wanted to bring my kid in. Sure. Come on in. We don't take appointments. Just sign in and then go back to your car and wait. If there's a line, wait for your turn. Okay. And does the kid have to wear a mask or anything? No. No. You don't have to. Okay. And um, is there... Can I like just make kind of a request thing... I just want to see if this is doable. Sure. Like, uh, is there any way that we could just... Could could you pretend that you, like, made a mistake and freak out? I, I want to make my kid cry, basically, as a punishment. Aww. How old's your kid? Uh, he's, he's seven, but he's being kind of an asshole lately. <laughs> well, and, it would all depend on whose chair he ends up in. Okay. Cause I, I don't I, know if anybody... I. I don't know if anybody will do that. Like, may maybe, like, pretend, like, just kind of snip at his ear a little bit, and then we'll explode, like, a blood packet. I have a blood packet I can give her. <laughs> and, and just have everyone freak out, like, oh, my God, oh, my God. We cut his ear off. We cut half of his ear off. He's going to die. Oh, my gosh. I, well, I, I don't know if anybody else will. I'd probably be the only one that would probably do that. Can you you would? We'll have to see. Well, possibly. <laughs> would you pretend he? Would you pretend he's gonna die? And, and oh, I don't know if I could go that far. You well, might traumatize the kid for life. 
I know, but he's being an asshole. Like, uh, I know, but you don't want to mess him up for being scared to death to get a haircut for the rest of the next 10 years. Am I allowed to be in there, or do I have to wait in the car while you do this? No, you can be in here. Ah, darn it. I was thinking, like... Uh, okay, you know, well, you, you, you can you stay could, in the car if you want. Well, if I do that, you could be like, go get the father, because he needs to have some last words with him before he dies. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get anybody to do all that. <laughs> Come on, I'll I'll give you a good tip. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. I, I just, don't know if he'll end up in my chair, okay. but I don't think anybody else is going to do that. I can request you specifically, right? <laughs> well, I get off at 3, so I leave at 3 o'clock today. Oh, so I don't get the free gift, because I, I was hoping for the $8 cut from 47 An $8 cut? Yeah, I got a business card here that says, Kids Cut, $8, 10 and under, free gift from 4 to 7. But that's okay. I'll- yeah, right. Not from us. What are you talking about? This is the number I called. Not from us. We're not even open till seven. Oh, ha- oh how old is that card? Ah, uh, I don't know. Apollo. The sent it kids to me. cut stuff. Oh, that was so old, and that was something they tried out. I'm assuming. In the eighties. That was a kids club, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh no, that's that never even happened. Ah, shit. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's okay. I, I can pay full price, and I'll tip really well if you make him think he's about to die. Well, like I said, I get off at 3 today. The okay. rest of the week I work, the Fridays I work till 5. I can be there by 3. That's okay, well, I'll give it my best shot. Or, I mean, we could do tomorrow. I'm not going to traumatize just... the kid too bad. Well, no, you have to. That's the whole thing. Like, the more you well, traumatize him, the, the more I'll tip. Well, I don't, I don't know. It all, I don't know. Because if he's, I don't know. But I'm in the middle of a haircut now. I'm thinking about calling an ambulance and, like, having an ambulance take him to the... <laughs> Come on, I gotta go. <laughs> can I talk to the I'm customer? I'm really in the middle of a haircut. Okay, can I talk to the and customer? I have one waiting. Can I talk to the customer while you cut their hair? No, I gotta go. Please. No, I gotta go. Please. All right, one down. Uh, several to go. That was kind of fun. Next, we're going to call Jerry at an insurance company. Hopefully his landline picks up because his cell phone is a 314 number. His landline's a 636. I'm not going to be calling no 314 numbers. That'd be bullshit. Hi, this is Jerry. Jerry? Yes. Hey, I, I was calling them. I, I was wanting to get some uh, life insurance on my neighbor. Hello? <laughs> Yeah. What's your insurable interest there, sir? I don't know, but like, I'm just wondering, like, do do, you, do I need to have the neighbor's permission? Yeah. Why? It, because you don't have an insurable interest in your neighbor, sir. Well, it just, I don't know, just, I, I just want to do it. Like, no reason. Just don't worry about it. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I I don't think we can uh, we can insure your neighbor for you what? Uh, without an insurable interest. Can I just like can I can I sign his name? Like I mean, can I no. ha- have him sign a paper that says it's cool? No. Why not? No, you do not have an insurable interest. Who is this, by the way? Uh, my name is Brad Carter. Brad Carter from Missouri. Uh, no, Brad. Yeah. Um, no, Brad, I'm sorry. I, I just, uh, you know, you may have to call another insurance agent to get that done. Oh, so it's just you that's being the asshole and won't do it? Oh, I see how it is. And that sounded like his cell phone, but I dialed the 636 number, so it's not my fault. Let's see what's next. All right, next is a dental care place. Thank you for calling dental care this is nicole how can i help you hey nicole uh i just needed to find out um how are you guys very backed up for appointments right now uh depends are you needing cleaning and checkup or treatment yeah just cleaning and a checkup okay yeah we're booking out like end of june beginning of july okay can i wear a face mask while it's going on while he's doing it all um, so we ask that you wear a mask when you first come into the waiting room, but you won't be able to leave the mask on during the... Ooh, that sounds dangerous. Cleaning. I want to I want to wear it during the entire cleaning. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they won't they won't be able to do the cleaning. Yeah, if you have the mask on. he can he can put the tools like behind the mask and maybe use an endoscopic camera. 
No, we don't have that. Why don't you get one? They're cheap. They're like 20 bucks. Hook up to his phone and he can just like look in there and see behind the mask. I, I mean, I could make that suggestion. Well, sounds like you're not taking safety seriously. I don't want to go in there and die. We're, we're really serious here, I promise. Mm-hmm. But you're going to make me take off my mask just to get my teeth cleaned? Yes. Sounds like a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> okay. Bullshit. Are you wearing a mask right now? Because it doesn't sound like you are. Unless you have the microphone underneath the mask. I am wearing a mask. Hmm. Is it too thin of a mask? Because it seems pretty thin. I can't even tell you're wearing a mask. Well, that's that's good then. Do you have the microphone inside your mouth? I do not. But that'd be hmm. cool if I did. Yeah, it would be. Anyway, um, are they still going to require masks in June? As far as I know, yes. Hmm. Okay. So would you like to schedule an appointment? Can I take the doctor's temperature before he he does the work on me? Um, I'm sure he would let you. We're going to take your temperature. Okay. Well, I should be able to take his too. Okay. But I, I mean, I don't think he would object. Okay. Does do is that something that people normally do? I don't want to be weird. I mean, I haven't had anyone else ask that. No. Do 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 do, do you take his temperature? Like, does somebody in the office take his temperature every day? Do you all take each other's? Yeah. Temperature? We yes, yes we do. We all check our temperatures. Hmm. I'm going to be taking his rectally. Okay. Yeah, that I don't think is going to work. No, that's, that's the most accurate way to get this get someone's temperature. That's it. Okay. Just Would put the like dentist on the phone. Put him on the phone. He's with a patient. Can just I tell help the patient. You? Just tell the patient to wait. But just okay. walk in there and put it on speakerphone. I'll talk to them both. I don't have speakerphone. <sighs> what kind of rinky dink operation is this? <laughs> is this a joke? No, I would not kid about something as serious as COVID nineteen. Okay. Would you like to make an appointment? If not, I have another nah, I was just joking. call coming in. Yeah, I was just oh, joking. Okay. okay. Just joking. Just joshing with you. Okay. Hey, um, I'm actually a friend of Dr. Monroe's. Oh, okay. Hey, um, when you see him next, can, can you, like, slap him in the dick? Um, no, I, yeah, no, that'd be considered workplace sexual harassment. No, no. So I'm probably say, not going to no, do no, that. No, no, no. Say it's from me. Say it's from Brad Carter. Just, just yeah, like no. walk up to him and just like slap, just punch him. You know, give him a punch. You, you ever see Eastbound and Down where they, where Will Ferrell punches him in the dick all the time? Because he's no. just, they're just goofing around. They're just men having a good time. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with that. It's cool. I'm his friend. I went to school with them. I'm Brad Carter. Okay. Well, I, how about if you want to come in and do that, you go right ahead. But I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna refrain from that. It's not sexual. You're just going to slap him in the dick with his pants on. Good television show, by the way, everyone. If you've got Amazon Prime, I highly recommend watching Eastbound and Down. I just watched that for the first time last year. All right, next, we've got a car and RV repair place. And stapled to the back of it is counterfeit money. It's a $100 bill, but it's only the sides of it, if that makes sense. I don't know, like... If you fold a $100 bill into fourths, and then you just take out the middle two fourths, and you're left with just the sides, but they're connected. It's designed to fold over on the back of the card, so it looks like real money. Basically, this place is a bunch of shysters, and you should not trust them if they're going to lie to you and make you think you picked up 100 bucks. I really hate that. I, I see those, like, um, I, I picked one up at a Fred Meyer the other day at the grocery store. It was either a $100 bill or a $20 bill, but you pick it up. And it's like, Jesus loves you. You should read these Bible verses. And that just makes me hate Jesus. I don't trust Jesus anymore. He's trying to trick me with fake money. Hey, uh, this is uh, Steve Day from the 7-Eleven here in St. Charles. Okay. And um, we have this small issue. A customer just came in 
and try to use a hundred dollar bill that has your phone number on the back of it? <laughs> what? Do, do you are you aware that I, I guess someone at your at your shop there is printing up fake one hundred dollar bills? Uh, hold on, okay. Okay, are you okay. are you aware of this or not? No, well, I'm gonna get the boss. Hold on, well, okay. Well, you said well, like you maybe you are. What? Do you know about the fake hundred dollar bills? Do you have a bunch of counterfeit oh. money there? No, hold on, okay. Hmm. Hold on, I'm gonna get the Mighty box. Suspicious. Okay. Okay. Okay, honey. Yes, Kim, I help you. Hey, Kim. Uh, I'm. I, I. I. This is Steve Dave. I'm the manager at the Seven Eleven here in St. Charles. Okay. And uh, we had a customer come in here and and try to pass a counterfeit hundred dollar bill. Okay. And the weirdest thing is, like, when we open it and look on the back, it has your phone number on it. It's probably a marketing thing. This counterfeit $100 bill is a marketing thing? It's a piece of paper. If well, we have a piece of paper. Well, it's it's set up to look like $100. Like, it looks real. Did somebody if, give you that and you accepted it? Yeah, well, he started to, but then he noticed that your business card was stapled to the back of it. Because it was folded Stapled, over. It's, it's on the back of it. I'm it's sorry, what? On the, it's Please. on the piece of paper. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's, you, you don't understand. This is a $100 bill. It's like on green paper. It's the exact same colors as, like, this is definitely a photocopied $100 bill. But it's half I as have, long. Yeah, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, well, you don't make these? These counterfeit monies? No. Well, it Somebody has. Somebody must have copied something. I don't know. Yeah, well, no. The front of it's like. Just the ends of a hundred dollar bill, and you turn it over, and it's like a hundred dollars off at the truck and RV repair. And it has your phone number and your URL, and it has the name Kim. Okay. Like. Not real. I know. Well, we know that now, but the cashier Chad, like he he jumped over the counter and beat the shit out of this guy. That's not my problem. That's not real. Well, why are you Why are you making fake money? It's not fake money. Well, this guy tried to spend it here. That's that's your cashier's fault. It's no, no, I'd say it's yeah. the fault of the people printing fake hundred dollar bills and distributing them. Like, where do you leave these at? It's not any of your business. Uh, it kind of is because there's a guy laying on the floor here bleeding, and we haven't even called the police yet. We're thinking about just and letting him go. That's your fault. What? It's your fault. What's, how was that our fault? Because we take counterfeit bills very seriously. We get them here all the time. It's and clearly not a $100 bill. Yes, look, you should see this. It's like you've seen these, right? Like you, you make those there? We don't make them. Well, you have them printed somewhere? It's a marketing. But you're the one that distributes like, them, right? Like a business card. Ma'am, th this man is in serious pain and he's bleeding well, on the floor. I don't know why you beat him up. I didn't. Chad did. Chad's the well, cashier. Well, that's his fault. He, he uh, hurt no, somebody. I, he needs to go to jail. I don't know what you're talking no, about. No, the guy that tried to pass a $100 bill needs to go to jail. And the person making fake $100 bills and putting them out there, like, like have, you gotten, have you ever gotten, like, a visit from the Secret Service about what this? What are you talking about? Fake counterfeit money that you're printing and distributing printing? it. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not real. Right. Yeah. Counterfeit money is not real. I understand what counterfeit money is. Is there something you want? I don't like, I don't know. We, we may have to just kind of, I think this is going to be your fault. Cause what is our fault? The, this man who's definitely has to go to the hospital soon. Chad well, that's your fault. You beat him up. He tried to pass a counter. You can't beat up your customer. He tried to pass a counterfeit hundred dollar bill. Wouldn't you do so the that same? That means you beat him up. Yes. Because you know yeah. what? If people, okay. if we get a reputation as, you know, beating up counterfeiters, we're gonna have less counterfeiters. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's your so problem. So he he did the right thing. You did the wrong thing by this is not printing my problem. fake money. Yes, it is. You no, shouldn't you shouldn't be counterfeiting money at your place. It's not counterfeit. And, and what what, what kind of no. like shysters are working there that you would try and what's fool? What's wrong your, with you? What what's wrong with you? You're trying to fool what's your wrong customers. With you? You're trying to fool your customers. <laughs> Look at her trying to dodge her responsibility, pretending she's not the one that's out there counterfeiting money. All right, I've got three cards left. Uh, several of them have not answered. 
and I'm just not even going to bother with those. But we've got a chiropractor, we've got a real estate agent, we've got something about enhancing healthy lifestyles, but I can't tell exactly what they are. But this lady is an executive and clinical director. Good afternoon, Kevin Legend. I may help you. Hey, is Pat there? Hi. Hey, is this Pat? No, Pat is not here right now. Ah, shit. What's all that loud oh, noise in the background? You got your TV on? Yeah, I'm sorry. The TV is on. Jesus yeah. Christ. You guys fucking deaf over there? What's that? You deaf or what? Oh, no. <laughs> I hear the TV louder than you. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, like, uh, when's Pat going to be there? Um, she's not here right now. What do you guys do? Uh, we, we are a, a service provider for Medicare. Oh, Medicare. For this time. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then yeah. Uh, we provide in-home services as well. Did you turn the TV uh, down? It's off right now. No, I still hear it in the background. Don't lie. Oh, uh, okay. Don't lie. Yeah, yeah, Why are no. you lying? No, I'm not. Why are you I'm lying? I'm not lying. You're it, lying to me. It was a, it was a webinar that I was, I was listening to. So I'm sorry, I reduced it. Oh, a webinar. Yeah. I see. Okay. Well, I'll let you get back to your webinar. All right. Hey, uh, if I come in there later, can I kiss you? I'm sorry. <laughs> if I come in just a little bit later, can I kiss you on the mouth? Oh uh, no. Why not? No, I didn't do that. Why? I'm sorry. No, I don't. I, I don't I have. Didn't. I don't have COVID. <laughs> it's not about Corona. It's just. It's just my natural self. That's all. I'm a man. I don't care. It's a man. Yeah, but you know, you should expand <laughs> your horizons. I'm gonna come in there, and I'm gonna motion you to come over to me, and me and you are gonna have a kiss. It's gonna be very oh. romantic. <laughs> That's for another time, another issue altogether. That's not that's not what I do. Okay, whatever, fine. I'm breaking up with you. I, I don't want to see you ever again. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks. What? No, I said thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you for breaking up with you? All right, yeah. I don't ever want to see you again. Oh, no, what, what not? And can when you see Pat, can you slap her in the face? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll do that. All right, bye. <laughs> I don't even know what that was. That was not a prank call. That was stupid. I'm going to call the chiropractor next. Maybe I'll tell him I'm a witch doctor and I'm looking for a job. Thank you for calling chiropractic. This is Kelsey. May I help you with an appointment? Hey, Kelsey. Um, I'm going to be coming in there in just a minute. Is there any way you can give me just a quick demonstration? I'm going to bring my seven-year-old son with me, like of what you do with chiropractic. Like, I know it's like you're probably not a chiropractor. But can you can you just like try out one of the moves on me? Um, hold on one second, okay? Why? What are you doing? Because <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask the doctors to see if that's okay. Okay, just forget about that part. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna come in with my seven year old son, and I'm gonna trip over something, and I'm gonna act like I'm unconscious, but I'm not really. But like, do you think you could? What are you talking about? Uh, I'm gonna come in with my seven year old son. And I'm going to pretend to trip over something, and I'm going to fall over, and we're going to act like I'm unconscious. Like, just to scare him? I have no idea. To scare who? My seven-year-old son. He's going to come in there with me. N no, we can't have you do that. No, it's cool. Like, he's being a real asshole lately. I just want to teach him a lesson. So, like, can you just kind of keep the charade going for just just four minutes, maybe? No. And then I'm gonna pop up, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna point at him, and I'm gonna be like, "That's why you don't be an asshole." No, I'm not gonna do that. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> why not? <laughs> Ladies, trying to say she's a better parent than me. Whatever. And it looks like I can't call this Caldwell Banker lady because both of the numbers on her card are three one four numbers. I don't know what you're trying to pull, Apollo, but that's a bunch of bullshit. But the last one here is. A uh, landscape and gardening place. It is in the 636 area code. Hey, basket, how can I help you? Hey there. Uh, this is Brad Carter. Um, I'm going to be coming in there in just a minute uh, with my son. He's only seven. Uh, do, do we have to wear masks? 
No, you're fine. Okay. Um, are you like are you working there like near the front of the store? Yes. Okay. I was wondering like when I come in there, I'm gonna trip over s some like uh, flower pots and stuff on purpose, and I'm gonna like fall over and act like I got knocked unconscious, just to scare my son. Uh, okay. Do you think you can play along and act like you think I'm dying or something? <laughs> um, I'm not a very good actor. <laughs> no, it's like, but my son's seven, so he's an idiot. He's not gonna know. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm just I'm gonna trip over some flower pots. I might break some things. I'll pay for anything I break. But I want to, like, act like I'm unconscious. And can you say, call 911. We need to get an ambulance. Oh, my God. I'm, I have a blood pack with me. So it's going to look like I'm bleeding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've, got it, I've got it in my hat. So, like, when, I, when my head hits the floor, it's going to look like blood's everywhere. Okay. Okay. So you're, you're cool with this? Like, you're going to play along? We're going to be there in, like, five minutes. Sure. Okay, my son, he's going to be crying and stuff. Can you just tell him not to be such a baby? Can, <laughs> Can I tell him to not be such a baby? Or, or, you know, just give him kind of that general attitude. Like, like man up, you... man, You know, man up, kid. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, you're so cool. I can't believe you're going to help me out with this. I, I'm just... I'm having a hard time with parenting right now. My son's being a real asshole. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, just, just play along when I come in and I trip over something. I'm going to make a scene. Okay. So, but maybe you can just, like, quietly assure the other customers that I'm fine and it's we're just teaching the kid a lesson. Okay. Okay. Great. I'm going to be there in five minutes, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, can you say something before I hang up with you? Sure. Can you say, the show's over, listeners. Now it's time for voicemails. The show's over, listeners. Now it's time for voicemails. I'm probably too drunk to be calling into this, but I think you should put Carlito saying ass on a an endless ass, loop in ass, the background ass, of all your prank calls. Ass, Every 30 ass, seconds, you ass, should just say ass. ass, ass, ass and uh, under okay. That's uh, a great idea. Ass, Carlito, ass. it's awesome. Yeah, he is, but I'm not sure I like your idea. Sorry. Hey, Brad. It's Depressed Mashed Potatoes. Hey. Sorry to bother you again. But I was just listening to a show from me. It's the voicemails. And I heard you talk about voice one, two, three, so I decided to try it. And it's really cool. I, I tried it. I didn't think it was going to work because it's 2020 now, and it worked great. So I was wondering, are you, do you think you'll ever do pranks with uh, the voice one, two, three, like you did for the uh, the calls you used to do? What? That's all I wanted to know. Your Thanks. voice keeps yeah. cutting out. The Trojan calls you used to do. Trojan calls? That's all I wanted to know. Thanks, Brad. Keep up the great work as always. Bye. Thanks, depressed mashed potatoes. I don't really remember doing pranks with voice one, two, three. Can you still trick them into doing free voice work for you? Because that's crazy if you can. And I'm sorry your voicemail cut out, so I'm not sure what you're referring to. The only thing I remember I used to do with voice one, two, three was make free intro songs. For PLA Radio. Hey, Brad. This is Junior from Poughkeepsie, New York. I hey. heard about Carlito. I'm so sorry about Carlito. Aw, thanks. You and Carlito were the closest, and I love his show. This time, I'm so sorry for your loss, Brad. Thanks. I love your show. Just keep doing what you're doing. I will. All right. I'm thankful for this family. Have a good night, Brad. Bye. Bye. Maybe it's my voicemail that sucks. Everyone's calls are coming in terrible. Hey, Brad. Hey. It's Will here from Florida. Hi, um, Will. I used to listen to your show a lot a couple of years ago, but for whatever reason, uh, fell up. out of the loop. And then during the COVID season, I've been listening a lot more. And uh, I got to say, man, I, you haven't lost your touch. That shit is fucking Thanks. great. So, uh, yeah, I was drinking. Everyone else says I'm a big pussy now. And got a little drunk and decided I'd call in and say, uh, keep up the good work, Brad. Thanks. All right. Later. I'll, I'll try. Hey, Brad. Hey. It's Leonardo. Hey. I don't think I've been this drunk in a long time. Why is everyone drunk today? That's all I wanted to say. Okay, yeah. That's really interesting, Leonardo. Everyone cares about how drunk you are. Hey, Brad. This is Tokalosh uh, from Patreon. 
Hey. Big fan of the show. I really appreciate you putting yourself out there on the front line for all of us listeners. So, yeah. Yep. I'm essential. This time of quarantine. That's uh, me. You're doing God's work. Yep. Keep doing what you do. I'm, I'm basically cooler than nurses and Amazon workers. Hey, Brad. This is Mike Dan. I'm just calling to thank you for all that you do and getting me through this COVID-2069 bullshit. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, Rip Carlito, you'll be sorely missed. I guess Mr. Biggs will be next. I don't know if you. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much guessing. And we need to do a, a show uh, based on uh, on uh, who, who's going to die next. So yeah, thanks. Bye. Okay, it's probably going to be me. Hi there, Brad. Um, Gordon calling in. I haven't done so for a while. Uh, I thought I would um, since you know not much to do. Um, but also two shows ago, um, Nobby Guy called in. Um, about the disgusting meme, and I think you're a bit confused about what he was talking about. Well, I thought I'd call in to clarify that, um, okay. because it's not known by the word. Uh, Honestly, I don't even know what you're talking about. It sounds vaguely familiar, but I don't remember anything from disgusting, shows. Disgusting, but rather disgusting. Um, if you go to knowyourmeme.com and uh, type in the word disgusting, that's D for W, I for I-O-U, oh, God. S for C, G for Nat, U for Uber, S for C, T for Tsunami. I mean, fast a forward a little bit. This is a long voice now. now. The other thing is, um, I was listening back to lots of old shows, and I was just thinking and considering just how amazing it is the number of people who, um, when you uh, give them a false accusation about doing something, and then you tell them, don't worry about it, I don't care, just please stop doing it. Do you not think about how amazing it is the number of people who opt not to just go with that but defend it with all their might i mean is that a normal thing do you do you just cut Pretty out crazy. a lot of the calls where people don't really give you a reaction i'm just wondering that and uh, finally i was thinking could you not or now is now not a good time to um restart with the sort of space um sort of with testing laser beams on your house prank call uh, oh, yeah. but, uh calling as though you're from spacex and it's to do with the uh, the starlink um, yeah. that you're beaming high-powered lasers at people's yeah. houses because uh, that's uh, that's what yeah i agree i definitely need to do more international space station calls it's been way too long for those mr big sent me a space wrench which i still haven't shown off in a video or anything i haven't even taken a picture of it and it's pretty amazing but he sent me this space wrench to try and get me to do more iss calls and i haven't done that so i'm sorry mr biggs i need to do both of those things very soon Hey Roy, my name is Aaron, your number one blind fan. Hey. I just wanted to know what voice changer you use for your show. It is a... Alright, thank you. Bye-bye. Tee-hee. It's a Roland VT3. That's V as in 5, T as in Tsunami, and the number 3. It's a cool little machine. I love it. Hey Brad, this is I Don't Regret Not Jumping from Maryland. What's the longest you've ever gone without making a prank call? What a good question that I don't know the answer to. I'd say, I mean, this show started in 2014 and it's now 2020. And what's the longest I've ever taken off from a show? Maybe a week or two? Maybe three? I don't know. I don't think I've taken three weeks off, have I? Even when I go on trips, I just kind of do the show wherever I am. So for the past six years, it's been, uh, you know, a week, maybe? Possibly two between making prank calls. Before that, though, I just don't know. I bet you there might be a spot in there somewhere where I went like a whole year without making a prank call. Possibly. But maybe not. I don't know. Because even if I'm not recording prank calls, I probably made them at some point. Hi, Brad. Hello. My porky, aka boyfriend, has been a faithful listener of the Snowplow Show for many years. For the last couple of months, we began a nightly ritual of listening to the show together at a distance. Laughter truly has made the little time we get to spend with each other and the ongoing challenges of living apart easier. Yes, Roy Gerbel, you know you're in love when you can't fall asleep without listening to the show because reality is finally better than your dreams. Thanks again. All right. Thanks for that speech. I appreciate it. There's a lot of voicemails in here because I've been sucking at doing shows lately. So I think I'm just going to kind of cut these short. I don't know. I should do a couple more. I've only been doing recent ones. Here, let's play this one. Hi, Brad. It's Stephen from the OK. Really mm. sad news about Carlito. And I'm just wondering if you could later on this year as a tribute 
in his memory, phone up NORAD and just ask for a confidence report as looking glass. Okay. For anybody that doesn't know, Carlito a few years. That sounds like a great thing to do while I'm on probation. Dialed up NORAD, the Santa tracker, and asked them for a confidence report as they were tracking some inbound ICBMs from the Soviet Union. And he yeah. almost started World War Three. If you could do that, that'd be a great thing to do to honor his memory. Cactus, cactus. Bye. I actually tried to find that call today, and I couldn't find it. I looked on his YouTube. I looked in his Dropbox files. I cannot find the Santa NORAD call because I was going to play it on the beginning of the show. I know Dwight has it because I'm pretty sure he played it on Saturday. So I will try to find that soon and either put it on the beginning of a show or I also, I think I mentioned this already, but I want to do a Carlito episode of the Mr. Dobelina show. And that one's definitely got to be in there. So you will hear that soon, eventually, someday. Hey, it's Strange Orange here, a uh, long-time hey. listener, fifth-time caller. Uh, just wanted to say, uh, rip in peace, Carlito. I heard the bad news on uh, Twitter, and obviously I listened to your uh, last show, Ding Dong. I just want to share a nice story. Uh, one uh, night, I was uh, working as a uh, security guard, because that's what I used to do, and uh, I was in front of a strip mall at night, because I had to put some of their product out for some reason and leave it overnight. So I was there with a gun on my waist and boredom in my mind, protecting a bunch of antique furniture. So I decided to tune in to uh, Mixler, actually, and I was listening to Carlito and Dwight uh, prank call some uh, hotel guests, I believe. And, and that got me through the night, just uh, sitting there in the summer air, listening to some pranks, laughing a lot, being uh, absolutely uh, by myself there in a parking lot at like midnight. So your gun. just want to share that nice story. Anyways, uh, thank you very much. Love your bad mic. Thanks, Strange Orange, for the Carlito story. That's probably enough voicemails for one episode. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I am going to try to do a live show tomorrow morning on Friday mornings, just like I do every single week, except last week. Oops. You know, right before the XYZ show. No guarantees or anything, but that is my plan. If I can't do it then, then I'll try and do another one on Sunday. Of course, I'm running late again this week on doing shows. I don't know why I keep doing this. I need to stop being a slacker. But in any case, I will try to have another show done this week. Another snowplow show. Hopefully not a hobo sode. You know, the hobo sode that I did on Tuesday, that was like an hour long. So that should count as a real snowplow. I don't know why I didn't make that a snowplow show. Anyway, thank you to the sponsors of today's show. I regret jumping Omni. Ernie M F O D 87 and four O C R V hobos. I appreciate everyone's support in doing this show. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash phone losers or phone losers.com slash support. I'm going to end today's show with a really old song by Bob rivers, because this one seems appropriate for this episode. Asshole son, you're a bum. You, try- you know what? You're a dick. Leave them alone.